Television. This week I finally got around to watching the second season of Rectify. Rectify is a show on Sundance Channel about a guy named, uh, I almost said William, Daniel Holden, Daniel Holden, who uh, was maybe wrongfully, maybe correctly convicted as a child um, of, uh, I believe, raping and murdering his girlfriend. And so it's been all these years, genetic evidence has finally uh, allowed him to go free, but not in the sense where he's like totally, you're absolutely sure he wasn't uh, guilty, it's just enough to, I guess, cast doubt. And so anyway, he's free, and uh, kind of going back into the real world. And this is a show, uh, I say this all the time, unlike any other show on television. It has a tone and a pace and a quality of acting, and by that I don't necessarily mean great acting, like it is good acting, but like the the style of acting and the pacing of everything is very, very unique. Uh, similar to, not similar to, but a, a similar level of uniqueness to something like Hannibal, where everyone talks very slowly and deliberately and there's a lot of pauses. Like, there's a similar um, overarching style to Rectify, and it's a show that isn't watched by a lot of people, uh, also like Hannibal. Hannibal and Rectify do not have a lot in common, I need to stop talking about Hannibal, but Rectify, um, watch it folks, give it a chance. The first season I liked a lot, especially um, at the end, it's not a show that's super plot based, like you can't talk a lot about like the major reversals of things that happen, but there's great character beats and character moments, and you, you live with these people, and it feels, there's something so, um, I want to say not not nutritious, but wholesome. Uh, it's not wholesome. There, there's something really powerful, powerful and affecting, and emotionally pulling to to be with these people in these circumstances, which is something that so many people, I'm sure, in this country can relate to. Um, but the particulars of this, the specifics of this, especially because of the nature of the case, um, is really well done. And nothing feels soap opera-y or drawn out or like they're just trying to shock or surprise the audience. Um, some of the big reversals will happen in the middle of, you know, an episode in the middle of the season. Um, that being said, I think both season one and season two built really well to a cool conclusion. I'll, I'll say in season two there's a character that seemed absolutely convinced that Daniel Holden did what he was convicted for and spends a lot of time like trying to put him back in prison um, and then he starts to see things I, I want to say like the way the audience sees them in season two where it's like well you know what that guy is working really really hard to try to make him look guilty and uh, that's suspicious and so there's like there's little those are the actually kind of the joyful things in the show is watching a character have an epiphany, a realization, and then to act on that in a way that you want them to, like you're rooting for them to like, yeah, figure that out, dig into that, I want to know too. And um, it's just a really well done show, so rectify, check it out, I really liked the second season, the first season was great, um, I think it was, yeah, it was renewed for a third season, so I'll be really curious to see where it goes next. Um, yeah, good stuff. Five stars, five stars, with a confidence of four. And then, okay, technically this was this week because I started doing this uh, yesterday on Monday, but it's happened, so I'll just talk about it. Uh, Project Greenlight is something I've heard about on and off over the years, um, something I'd never sat down to watch until yesterday. I know it just came back, so similar to what happened with uh, Wet Hot American Summer, which I hadn't heard of before the new Netflix miniseries, and... Um, uh, the Comeback with Lisa Kudrow, which I hadn't heard of the original one until they revitalized it on HBO. Um, I hadn't really watched Project Greenlight, and now that it's been renewed and more people are talking about it, I'm like, okay, let's go back and watch the first season. And I've always been very interested in the process of, of making movies and television. I watch all the behind-the-scenes stuff and director's commentaries and bonus discs whenever I get a movie and a DVD. That's the only reason I still buy physical versions of movies is because I love getting that second disc special features kind of thing. And so Project Greenlight, for anyone who doesn't know, it, it started out in 2001 as a giant screenplay competition um, hosted by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and a couple of their producing partners and that kind of thing. Basically, I think them looking at like what had happened to them with Goodwill Hunting and how they kind of came out of nowhere and were able to make this great movie. I think it's a great movie, guys. Um, and wanted to give other people that same opportunity to uh, just have a, a quality script that helps that, that gets made, you know, totally based on the quality of the script. So 10,000 people submitted screenplays, and then they narrowed it down to 10. And then those 10, their 10 favorite, they had each of those writers uh, direct a scene from it. Because the idea was that they weren't just looking for a great screenplay, they were looking for someone who was going to be a great first-time writer and director. It's kind of a tall order. It's, it's really asking a lot. Um, and so they ended up selecting for this first season a guy who wrote 
a um, screenplay called um, uh, for not Forgotten Summer, or maybe it is Forgotten Summer, Lost Summer, something like that. Stolen Summer, that's it. And um, it's you know it's kind of a kind of a schmaltzy after school special kind of thing. I mean, as Ben Affleck says at one point, he's like, this could either be Stand by Me. Or it could be an after-school special, um, depending on how it's done. But anyway, um, I haven't seen the movie that came out that, resulting from it. I, I will watch it when I'm done with the season. But there's something incredibly fascinating about the minutia of watching this movie get put together for what's supposed to be a million dollars. I mean, very quickly, even though it's a really simple movie, they find out very quickly that because they want it to be in Chicago and they want it to be in the year 1974 and they want to use child actors, like all this stuff makes it a movie that cannot be done for under a million dollars. So watching the producers and the costume designer and the line producer and everyone working together, Harvey Weinstein's in there, um, trying to, to make this work uh, on a super low budget is incredibly fascinating. And as a viewer, it's actually really wonderful to have the the winner of this competition as, as a way in. I think his name was uh, Nate Jones, something like that. Sorry, that's probably not right. Um, this guy who you know wrote this great screenplay and then is directing his first movie to have him as the kind of everyman that you can relate to. I mean, because I think like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, like they came from Boston, they were normal guys, but to everyone nowadays, or even in 2001, I think they were just movie stars and so hard to relate to as like a normal person. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say even in here, they come off like movie stars, they have that kind of air about them, uh, whereas this guy really feels like a normal guy, and watching his transformation from just like, you know, he's got his kid and his wife, and they're super excited about this competition, and just enthusiastic, and like, wow, I get to make my movie, and then, you know, becoming a little bit more, like, hard, and, and, uh, and, uh, and callous to the whole process, because you gotta fight for these things, and then things don't work out, and you can't get bent out of shape over it, because there's always something else to do. Um, it's cool, so I'm, I'm I have four or five episodes in, and uh, I think, yeah, I'll probably watch the entire series. I think this season going on now is the fourth season, and um, I think it's a really cool thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, anything, anything that encourages meritocracy, anything that encourages um, quality to be more important than just who you know, um, I think that's really wonderful. So Project Greenlight, um, I'm giving, for now, four stars with the confidence of three.